I, yeah. you know, I, I see the wall there and I see these two walls and I see the ceiling and the floor and my body, but I don't see the fourth wall. Yeah. Uh, so f privately for me, I'm not surrounded by four walls. There's only three. I'm not in prison. I'm not trapped in this room. In fact, this room is in me privately. And so I'm seeing I'm free as who yeah. I really am. Yeah. As an adult, I'm aware. As Richard, I'm not free. So I have both sides. And um, this is so uh, kind of healthy and delightful, you know, one wants to be aware of it. It's, it's not really a kind of difficult job. You know, it, it's something that is very um, uh, a positive experience. And um, I think just becomes, you know, a, as normal as being self-conscious is, is normal in a way. So it's kind of your reference points change somehow. What was, you saw yourself as a separate self when yes. you were much younger and then you had the experience with Douglas and that has brought about an inclusiveness and that's presumably still evolving all the time. Yes, exactly. Uh, and uh, you see, I think the, 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 when you were a baby you weren't aware of your separate self yet. So the process of growing up is becoming aware of your separate self. Yes. You've always been your true self. And in order to profoundly believe in your separate self, you've got to kind of forget about your true self. Otherwise, you, you'd have it always in the back of your mind and you wouldn't really believe in your separate self. So the process of growing up is this profound identification with your separate self. Now, when you awaken, uh, I, th in my view, you realise this, this is not a mistake. This is a beautiful development in awareness that the one has become aware of being a little one, a, 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 a public self, as well as its true self. And so now I, 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 in my own experience, find that living my life as Richard is different now that I've awoken to whom I, I really am. Because I am now aware of this fantastic resource at the heart of Richard. And of course, once you realise that it's at the heart of yourself, you know it's at the heart of everyone and everything. I mean, it... it yeah. You know, it's not, it, and, and uh, you, now the life you live, when you're aware of being headless, to put it in very simple terms, it, there's a, it, publicly it's the same, but privately there, there's a fantastic new dim dimension arisen. So, for example, publicly I'm, I'm aware that uh, we're separate, but privately now I'm experiencing being capacitive for you. Th this is... Uh, a, a, you know, a beautiful, deep, true uh, kind of open secret. And th this affects the way you are with us. I, now I see I am capacity for my environment. You know, the env I don't stop here. The space includes not only my body and my feelings, but the table mm. and, and the trees and the, and the planet. And uh, uh, one sees that one has no boundaries privately. Publicly, you're, you're well aware of the boundaries. But you're still aware of Richard yeah, himself. absolutely. And probably more so, I think. It's very interesting, because we've had a whole series we've done on Conscious TV about non-duality. We've yeah. maybe done six or seven people now. And they're pretty much saying that there's no self. That they're, you know, I'm using my words rather than yeah. their words, but yeah. they are in permanent, there's one, there's only oneness. Yeah. And they somehow, there isn't a they to be impermanent, to, in their terms, there isn't a, a they to be impermanent to touch with the oneness, but there's just oneness, and the I individual is gone. But it seems you're talking about possibly a bit of a different state, if you like. You're still in touch with the, the void or the source, the words that yes. you use, yes. and yet Richard is still there. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I, I really don't understand any other way of being. I mean, if you were not aware of your individual self, then why not walk in front of a bus? I mean, you know, what, what would be the difference? I'd, I'm being a bit facetious, but I, I find that the... the uh, on the one hand, it's simply... I, I would just be honest, you know. I, I'm aware of both. Yes. And, and I think this is fantastic. I, there's not a mistake or, or anything gone wrong. It, it's, <laughs> it's a wonderful, wonderful thing uh -huh. that the one has now many vehicles for expression. Yes. I mean, to me, the whole journey is in the beginning, when you were a baby, you were one. Then you discovered you were one amongst many. 
And now you discover you're one and many. We are many and we're one. Now that is a fant far better condition from just being one, in my view. You've got the best of both worlds. Yes, yeah. And uh, I think also that, I mean, the, the, to me, that it's being honest and it's just being true uh, and it, 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 I think, it corresponds with what people have found down the centuries anyway. Uh, but also, in terms of the modern world, I mean, how far is, is the claim that you, you don't exist going to go? You know, it, it's, it doesn't look very practical to, you know, the, the problems in the world. Well, you might say, well, it's not about th that. But to me, the, the challenge is to communicate and show how this realization is, is highly practical and does not fly in the face of science or what we know about being here and who we are. You know, it, it's, a, it's an inner realization that supports one's individuality and empowers one, you know, really to be oneself. <laughs> you become very alive and passionate. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. really, really, and and you know, uh, it it fits in with you know so much poetry and art and yeah, yeah. So uh, I know I, I I I'm making a plea for uh, this modern way. I think yes, uh, and uh, uh, but it has profound you know it, profound implications. You know, for example. When you're a baby, do you know yet where your mind is now? Because you don't think of yourself as an object, so your mind is everywhere. And the process of growing up uh, is the discovery that your mind is located here, apparently, and other people have got minds, called the theory of mind. Mm -hmm. So I've never experienced anyone else's mind, myself. But growing up is the kind of taking on board that idea, that there are other people and there's a self. Yes. Now, this uh, is a superb development, and it means that, I, that one can own oneself and describe one's own point of view and listen to other people's point of view. It's a real deepening in, in terms of one's experience of life. Now, it, when you awaken to who you really are, you still accept that, but you, you awaken, reawaken, to a private point of view well, because I have no head, where are my thoughts? They're, they're out in the world. <laughs> where are they? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And where are my feelings, yeah. you see? Yeah. Uh, and so privately, I'm now seeing my mind isn't contained, isn't yeah. trapped. It's big. Now, is this good for your mind? It's fantastic. Yeah. One of the main problems we have is feeling trapped and self-conscious and critical. Yeah. You know? And that partly comes from this idea you're behind... It's this. just all in there, yeah. of course. And yeah. if, if, if you see that there isn't a there for it to be in, <laughs> You're out it the poses box. the big question, where is it? I know. Which is uh, oh. and, and the start of quite a journey. It is, yeah. it is. And the more you go on, the more you realise how much you swallow and hook like a line and sinker about what it was to be you. Yeah. And it, it's fully understandable, it's the objective view, but the subjective, private view is so different and so freeing and yeah. so creative. You know, and... Uh, they don't, they don't argue against each other, they com complement one another, the, the outside view and the inside. Mm. They're, not, they're not enemies, they're friends, you see. And this is the great work I think Douglas Harding did in his philosophy. He, sh he showed how this makes sense, you see, uh, and, uh, yeah. Okay, we're going to draw to a close now. Uh, okay. Thank you very much for well, coming along, Conscious to come along TV, and, Richard. Uh, uh, spend some time with you. Absolutely, thank you. And uh, don't forget Richard Lang's book, Seeing Who You Really Are, A Modern Guide to Self-Discovery. And we will see you again soon on Conscious TV.